right, let's go ahead and do unit six. So go into the content, find unit six, light and flash, and down at the bottom is the test. Right click on your test and open that link in a new window. And then you're going to resize that window so you can see what you're doing. Slide it right over so that you can still read the questions. And you still have a scroll bar. And then on your other window, you're going to go up to 6.01 unit introduction light and flash and click on that and resize that window perfect and let's check out the first question it says we see color because an object that has light striking it has certain chemicals in it that illuminate, absorbs the color we see, reflects the color we see, or refracts all colors but the one we see. Let's find out. You might already know the answer. Light and flash introduction. If the subject is what gives the photographic structure, then light is the heart and soul of a photograph. While good composition can give your images movement and keep the viewers interest, light is what gives it life. In photography, light is not just a way to illuminate a subject so you can take a photograph. It is a part of the composition. Appropriately, using the light you have to work with adds a visual characteristic to the image that is hard to describe. Using the light simply as a way to light the subject can leave the image somewhat between flat and boring. Understanding the characteristics of light and how to use light is a must for any photographer. The basics. Often the camera is compared to the eye. While there are a lot of things that are the same, there are a lot of things that are different. As you learned earlier, the camera responds to the three basic colors, red, green, blue. The eye doesn't break things apart like that, but both the camera and the eye respond to light. This unit is about using light in your photography. Before you start looking at that, there are some basic things about light you need to know. Objectives explain why we see objects at a certain color, explain how colors other than the three basic colors are produced. Why things have color. Imagine you're standing by a beautiful lake. The water is deep blue, the shore is a deep brown, and the leaves on the trees growing near the lake are pure green. There are white flowers on the trees. Where do all of the colors you see come from? The process starts with sunlight. Remember, sunlight is not one color, but has a range of colors. This range is called a spectrum and includes red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. When this spectrum hits the leaves of the tree, for instance, all of the colors are absorbed by the leaves except green, which is reflected. The same thing happens with the lake. Why do you think the lake is blue? It is absorbing all of the light except the blues, which are reflected. The flowers are white because they reflect all of the light that hits them. You guys know this stuff, don't you? Let's see, question one. We see color because an object that has light striking it reflects the color we see. Number two, the three basic colors are red or green. I need to read blue and red. That's right. <laughs> when we see colors other than the three basic colors, they are the three basic colors, modulated, constrained, interlaced, or mixed. Okay, well, let's keep reading. Let's find out. Here we go, let's look at this. Mixing to get colors. So all colors, white strikes an object. Some shades of red are reflected by the object, some shades of green are reflected by the object. The shore on the other hand is brown, but brown is not one of the colors of light. We see it as brown because it is reflecting a mixture 
of the three basic colors. Very few things reflect pure colors. First, the shore is dark because it is absorbing most of the light hitting it. A pure black object will absorb all light hitting it. That means that no light is reflected, right? The light that is reflected by the shore is made up mostly of red. It has some green in it, but the green is only about one half as much as the red. And there's a very small amount of blue in the reflected light as well. This mixing of the basic colors is how all colors other than the three basic ones are produced. Knowing this will be important both when you are photographing and later when you are processing your photographs, answering the following questions, and then check what you think you know by selecting the question links. How do we see the colors and objects around us? Light strikes the object and absorbs all of the colors except the one that we see. Why do we see the color blue or red? The color is reflected off of the objects while the other colors are absorbed. What are the three basic colors, red, green, and blue? What is a spectrum, a range of color that includes red, green, blue, orange, yellow, and violet? If a color is not one of the three basic colors, then how do we see it? The color we see is a mix of the basic colors. The orange of a carrot is mostly red with some green and a little blue. Did we answer this question yet? Mm. So when we see colors other than the three basic colors, they are the three basic colors mixed. How about that? <laughs> Let's continue. Natural light. In the early days of photography, the first portrait studios were on the roofs of buildings in an open area. There were no high-powered studio lights. Flash had not been invented yet. Everything was lit by natural light. Natural light comes from the sun. It is the only source of natural light. Light from any other source is artificial light. The trick is to learn how to use natural light in your photographs and take advantage of its characteristics. Let us see here. Natural light comes from the sun. Objectives. Explain what natural light is. Explain what front light, side light, and back lighting is. Explain what available light is. Direction of light. Natural light has two characteristics to be aware of in your photographs. Natural light has direction and quality. The direction of the light is stated in terms of where it is coming from relative to your subject. Front lighting means the light is coming from in front of your subject. This kind of light is useful when you want to show details in the subject. Side lighting means the light is coming from your subject's side. This kind of light is useful when you want to show the texture or depth of your subject. Back lighting means the light is coming from behind your subject. This kind of light is useful when you want to show shape or form. That's how you're going to get that little silhouette. The best kind of light to use is a combination of front and side lighting. This shows enough detail and reveals the depth in your subject. Let's see, have we reached one of our questions? Let's re what's our next question? The direction of the light is always in terms of where it comes from in relation to the subject. Front lighting comes from front, the front of the subject. Side lighting comes from the side of the subject. Back lighting comes from behind the subject. All right. Let's read the next question so we know what we're looking for. The ideal light to use is front light, a combination of side and back, a combination of front and side. Yeah, that one we just read. Yeah. Incandescent light generally comes from, let's find out. Can you determine if a photo is lit from the front, the side, or the back? Review what you know about lighting with this activity. This is a backlit photo. All of the light is behind the image. The subject is in shadow. That's backlit. 
front lighting. The light is coming from in front of your subject. Usually means that the sun is in the photographer's back. Side lighting, placing the subject so the light is coming from the side shows the texture or depth in your subject. The quality of natural light. The second characteristic of natural light is quality. This is judged by looking at the shadows that are cast and believe it or not, by the sky. Bright sunlight always produces crisp, dark shadows. Even when you have those thin, wispy clouds in the sky, if the shadows are dark and crisp, you have bright sunlight. This kind of light produces high contrast, the difference between the very light areas and the darkest areas. It also saturates colors very well, makes them intense. Moderate overcast, moderate overcast clouds produces shadows, but they are gray instead of dark, and they are not very crisp. It is not as directional as bright sunlight. The contrast is not as great and colors are a bit less saturated. This kind of light is great for shooting portraits outside. Heavy, overcast, dark clouds produces no shadows and is practically non-directional. The contrast is very low and the colors are not very well saturated at all. The light is pretty much the same no matter what direction you look. Available light. A special kind of natural light is called available light. This is natural light that has gotten into a room or other closed in area, either through a window, a door, or some other opening. The important thing here is that there is no other light in the area. There are no lamps turned on, etc. When you have available light, it sets up a light field in the room. The illumination is fairly consistent through the room and it is a very soft light, but it keeps some of the direction that natural light has. This is another great light for portraits. You will have to remember that when using available light, the camera will use slower shutter speeds and bigger apertures. It might get to the point where the shutter is so slow that you will have to use a tripod to avoid blurry images. You can also do things like set your camera on a surface like stack up some books and use your timer so that when the shutter goes off it's on a solid surface and it's not going to move at all because of your finger pushing the shutter. Helping natural light. Although we are going to look at flash and depth in the next section there is one special use that we'll mention here and we're going to go back to taking photographs of friends at the beach or the park. If you're going to take a photograph of someone outside in bright sunshine, you don't want them facing into the sun so that they'll be squinting. It's not pleasant for them and the photographs generally look pretty poor. The trick is to turn them away from the sun. You can turn them so they are backlit by the sun. You can use positive exposure compensation, but that will make the background lighter and washed out. There's a little trick that professional photographers use in situations like this. Turn your flash on. There is usually a mode called forced flash. You'll have to look through the camera's menu, but using flash here will lighten the shadows. Your subject or subjects will thank you and your photographs will look 100% better. Self check activity. Light coming from in front of the subject is front light. Light coming from the subject's side showing texture is side light. Light coming from behind the subject showing shape or form is back light. Flash used in natural to lighten or fill in shadows. In natural to lighten or fill in shadows would be your fill flash and natural light illuminating a room or other enclosed space entering through a window door or open area is your available light. Woo! Artificial light. We only have one source of natural light, the sun. Everything else is artificial light from the incandescent light in a living room 
down to the fluorescent lights in an office, store, or classroom. It's all artificial. Even a flash is an artificial light source. But flash is different yet and gets its own category. Artificial light sources share some characteristics with the sun, but they are different enough to put them in their own category. You've probably noticed one thing that is different already. There are primarily two kinds of artificial light sources, incandescent and fluorescent. We'll look at taking photographs in both kinds of light. Objectives, explain what artificial light is and identify some sources. Define the characteristics of the two most common sources of artificial light. Define what a flash is and how it's used. Explain how to avoid or correct the most common problems encountered when using a flash. Artificial light. Incandescent lights are the kind you find in most living rooms from a bulb that gives off light when the filament inside gets hot. This type of light is referred to as tungsten. It's important to know that tungsten light has a reddish orange glow. We don't see the glow because our brain automatically corrects for it, but the camera sees it and your images will have a reddish orange tinge. The camera has built in technology to automatically correct for reddish orange color cast and make elements in the image appear their normal colors. This feature is called white balance. When it's applied automatically, it's called auto white balance. Light fall off. Light fall off means that the farther away you and your camera get from the light source or the bulb, the lower the light level. If you are photographing someone who is 10 feet from an incandescent bulb, the amount of light hitting the subject will be one quarter that of a subject that is five feet away. This means that the camera will have to use an aperture twice as big and a shutter speed that is twice as slow. And the final thing to be aware of is that incandescent light, especially from bare bulbs, no lampshade, has very high contrast and can cause some very deep shadows on the sides of the subjects that are away from the bulb. To, encounter, to counter this, you might have to use positive exposure compensation or flash. Well, let's see here. Incandescent light generally comes from... A bulb like the one found in the living room, a tube filled with gas, high voltage LED, or low voltage. I would probably go with a bulb like the one found in the living room. <laughs> yeah, lights of the kind you find in your living rooms. <laughs> Incandescent light has what type of color cast? Remember that was the reddish orange color cast. Fluorescent light comes from, have we gotten there? Not yet. Fluorescent lighting is found in offices, schools, stores, etc. The light bulb for fluorescent light is a long tube filled with gas. Unlike incandescent bulbs, fluorescent lamps do not get extremely hot. Do we answer the question? Fluorescent light comes from a tube filled with gas. Whee! Fluorescent light has what type of a color cast? The light from fluorescent tubes has a distinct green color cast. The auto white balance feature in the camera takes care of this in most cases, but there are some fluorescent tubes that give off slightly different colors and you may have to do some correcting later on. Because most fluorescent tubes are mounted overhead and spread out on the ceiling, you have a very soft light that doesn't throw a lot of shadows. The other thing you have to be aware of with fluorescent light is that even though it might seem really bright to your eye, the camera will be using large apertures and slow shutter speeds just as with incandescent light. Let's check. Light from a light bulb like those found in homes is incandescent. Element in the bulb which heats and gives off light with a reddish orange color cast. Tungsten. Light from a gas filled tube with a typically greenish color cast. Fluorescent light. The principle that the farther away from a light source you are, the dimmer the light. Fall off. Correcting the color cast of a light source in the camera, white balance. Let's 
Let's make sure we're answering our questions. Bright sunlight is identified by, and moderate overcast is identified. Okay, here we go. Understanding flash. We normally don't think a lot about using the flash, but the flash is a powerful tool that is always with you. Almost all digital cameras have a built-in flash. Some are more powerful than others. The output power of any flash is measured by a guide number. The lowest power flashes have guide numbers of 25. The highest power portable flashes have a guide number of 200. Most digital cameras have a guide number of around 50. Some can go up to 70. With an average camera flash, your subject can be up to about 12 feet away. And now you know why it's pointless to use the flash on your digital camera from the 53rd row of the baseball stadium. But in most situations, if the camera is in program mode and the flash is needed, the flash fires automatically. Many digital cameras have special systems that measure how much light is needed and set the output of the flash. It would seem that, as far as the flash is concerned, it's all good. There are some things you need to be aware of. Fixing red eye. When photographing people using flash, you need to be concerned with red eye. Red eye is when the subject's eyes glow red in the flash photograph. This happens because the light from the flash is reflected back into the lens from the retina in the eye. There are a few ways to deal with red eye. The first way is to use the red eye reduction mode built into the flash. This mode sends out a few short bursts of light to make the iris in your subject's eyes get smaller. The second way to deal with red eye is to have your subject avert their eyes, have your subject look away from the flash a bit. The third way to correct red eye is to fix it in your processing software. GIMP. Telltale shadows. The next big thing to be aware of when using flash is that telltale shadow. The light from the onboard flash is harsh and has high contrast, so it will throw a very dark shadow behind the subject. There are a few ways to deal with this problem. If there's a wall behind your subject, have them stand very close to it and take the photograph at a bit of an angle. You might try having your subject lean against the wall. This will minimize the shadow. It won't completely eliminate it, but it will minimize it to the point where it won't be obnoxious. Another way to deal with the shadow is exactly the opposite. Have them stand in an open area, an open doorway, an archway, or literally in the middle of the room if it is fairly large. This will also minimize the shadow to a point. A final way to deal with the shadow is to have the subject against a dark background. Tips for using flash. Here are some tips for getting the most out of using your flash. Use the flash only when you have to inside in low lighting or when you are outside and need to lighten up some shadow areas. Don't shoot into mirrors or shiny surfaces. The reflection can cause the flash to turn off early and underexpose your subject. If you can't avoid a shiny surface, then photograph at an angle. Consider an extra set of batteries if you plan on shooting a lot of pictures using a flash. Multiple choice. The direction of the light is always in terms of where it comes from in relation to the subject. Side lighting comes from the side of the subject. Incandescent light has a reddish orange cast. Fluorescent light comes from a tube filled with gas. Moderate overcast light is identified by soft gray shadows. Okay, let's see here. Have we answered these questions? Bright sunshine is identified by dark, well-defined shadows. Okay, so I, I kind of missed answering this question at that point when we were reading about it. And moderate overcast light is identified by soft gray shadows. And remember, when you have really heavy overcast dark clouds, there won't be any shadows. All right, so... There we go. We did it. Good job. Don't forget to save your answers and then submit them.